very good day, everybody, and welcome to Twickenham and welcome to the Under-15 Cup Final. The two teams contesting the title this year, Queen Elizabeth Grammar School Wakefield and Wellington College. Before the teams come out onto the pitch here and it is starting to rain at Twickenham, we're going to have a look at both sets of teams, starting with Queen Elizabeth Grammar School Wakefield. Well, both teams are short of inspirational leaders in their team for Queen Elizabeth Grammar School Wakefield. It's Lance Barker, the team captain. He was injured in the semi-final due to concussion. So in his place, Will Hunter will be starting at fly half. He is supported at halfback by Harris Ning and Will Ryan. Sam McKenzie, Will Evans and Chester Lomas, as well as Jack Owensley, will make up the backs. In the forwards, Jack Bailey is the captain. Rufus Helm, Charlie Rust, Zander Layton. Fergus Kelly, Miles Lester, Jacob Story and Jacan are the starting 15. For Wellington College, well, their starting 15 looks like this. Reese Evans, the prop, Oscar Thomas at hooker, Rob Jones on the tight head, Rory McKnight and Sela Philisley in the second row. George Starmer-Smith, Bill Bright and Ed Taylor make up the back row. The halfbacks are Eddie Skinner and Ben Smith and then the wingers, Tom Pitts, and Jack Knapman with the centres, Will Corbett and Finn Crumley. The fullback is Inigo Langford. So we are ready to go at Twickenham in the under 15s Cup final. So Queen Elizabeth Grammar School up and running from kickoff. And Wellington in those amber shirts with the trim. And the ball being worked along the lines for the first time. So confirmation, Queen Elizabeth Grammar School playing from right to left on our screens and working this ball nicely along the lines whilst Wellington try to get to grips with their opponents early on, having kicked off. It's Wellington in the black jerseys and in the full amber strip, Queen Elizabeth Grammar School. Getting a lot of attention early on is Will Hunter. And he's put pressure on and Wellington have muscled the penalty. There's been a big intent from Wellington right from the early off. You can hear them, you can feel them from up here. You know, loads of line speed, loads of pressure. You can hear the entire back line lifting their forwards in around that breakdown area and they get nice early rewards. Great chance this for Wellington and Oscar Thomas has a first line out to throw into. One of the real tough operators in this Wellington outfit is Thomas and he gets the ball at the back of this mall and just a couple of steps forward made towards Quegg's Wakefield's line. Philisay, the prop forward will now pick and go and Philisay working his way ever so close. Eddie Skinner is the scrum half and he'll let his forwards do the work and what work they do from the off. It's a Wellington try to start this under-15s cup final as clinical as it gets. They'll take so much confidence from that start. You know, applied the pressure nice and early, got possession back. Smart play to go to the corner for their driving ball. Here, Phyllis gets such a good ball carry, knows he's not going to make it. This is a big area here. You know, players often keep fighting a few more inches and then end up getting held up, but knows he's not going to make it. Plants the ball back. And then Ed Taylor just muscles his way over and gets a try at Twickenham. Wellington's fullback, Inigo Langford to make this 
the full seven. Scored a try in every National Cup game so far. He's not bad off the tee either and Langford begins and Wellington have started with a bang. Three minutes into the game and we've seen some brilliant start from Wellington but what a strike from Langford there. Completely not phased. Let's see what Quakes can reply with now. So Quakes kick off and deep into Wellington's 22. Just seen Hitchin Boys School lift the under 15 Vars. But this is the turn of those who've made it to the showpiece, the big one at under 15 level. The two best teams meeting. Big hits, the order of the day to begin with. Looked like Starmer Smith was making his presence felt in this final, and that's been knocked forward. Quegg's having to switch to defence mode again early on. Ben Smith, the Wellington fly half. Ah, oh, that's so unlucky, just gets himself isolated there. But what I loved about that was the quick turnover. Straight away, Wellington nominating who's going to get on the ball, getting ready to attack. Just a few players around him, not quick enough to get to that breakdown. Well, this isn't going to find touch. Taken by Tom Pitts. And then shipped along to Langford. Silky hands along the back line from Wellington until that point. Has been raining in the last 15 minutes at Twickenham. Wex Wakefield profiting from that error. Yeah, you could see what Will Corbett was trying to do there. Could see that there was some space. The ball just didn't go to hand, which makes them then on the back foot and they're trying to chase to that breakdown. And that's where they've come off their feet. You can see here Quegg's just getting themselves rallied up for this opportunity. Hunters put the ball in a good position for them to strike off. Yeah, year nine student Will Hunter. Really good organiser of this Queen Elizabeth Grammar School side. That has landed right in Jack Bailey's hands physical presence that Quakes' his captain offers and he sets up a more which chugs along Harris Ning no hands. and scrum half waits makes sure that Xander Leighton is there for him and Leighton does get forward isn't released in the tackle and more ill-discipline from Wellington yeah, just no clear release got to release the player before you can try and go for the ball just interesting off that mall no Wellington players are on the floor they're all on their feet they want to go and apply as much pressure as they can on Queggs and that's what's getting them numbers around that breakdown to try and pinch the ball unfortunate there to give away the penalty Good luck. It's a good day to you as well, Rachel Burkle. I forgot to introduce you at the start of this one. Apologies for that. Just going to be rolling in all day. <laughs> Four on the bounce. It's a Will Hunter looking to get Quags on the board. Takes a glance off the inside post, but Hunter raises his finger, looks towards the supporters in the West End. Splendid start for the number 10. Yeah, lovely strike, and he, you know, he's trying to lift his players around him, making sure that they're all up for it as much as he is. 
But great for him to get the points on the board for his team. High kickoff. This is testing for Quegg's Wakefield. High tackle then. Wellington High chases tackle. were well timed. Six. Six, yeah, great work there from the assistant referee. Just slightly gets well, high on the contact ball. area. But what a kick. Really brilliant hang time. Allows for Wellington to get four or five players around that ball receiver. Does really well to keep hold of the ball. Well, both teams have had terrific seasons to date. Wellington College have only lost once. That was to said, but 22 points to 21. Such a rivalry at under-18 level through the years. And a rivalry at under-15 level this season too. But it is Wellington playing for silverware here and playing to push Queggs all the way back to their posts maybe. Breakout is well handled indeed. Jack Owensley. Good pick up. Black roll. Space being put on the ball by Hunter. And Wellington being tested in defence for the first time. Shouldering was Tom Pitts, the left winger. Harris Ning. Just keeping the pace steady. Queggs, they're not rushed once they've broken the Wellington line. Reorganising nicely. Ball out the back was from Bailey. Move. Now spread by McKenzie. Oh, it's just gone on in the tackle. The eyes were ever so briefly focused on Wellington players and not on the ball. Such a shame. It was such a great build-up. They were really stressing the defence from yep. of Wellington. Managed to keep recycling the ball, moving it from side to side, having to go on the outside edges. I love in the ambition that they want to play with. They seem to want to keep the ball alive. Just an unfortunate error there. We've talked about it. It's greasy out there. The rain is coming down. That will give Craig's a lot of confidence. The way that they played in those passages of play. So Wellington rush the midfield. Langford is up from Goal fullback. Tackle, tackle is good from Evans. What a power run this is. Quiggs driven back. And that pressure, that surge rate just means that Quiggs having to do things differently at the ruck and then getting it wrong. Yeah, she's got to get out of the way. You've got to allow the nine to want to play to move the ball. Just slightly sticks in there, which then forces the error from Wellington. But moments ago, we saw what Wellington can do from this position. That's a great touch finder there from Ben Smith. Puts his team in such a great position. Several hundred litres of water has fallen on the turf since that opening try for Wellington. Oscar Thomas has an even trickier task to find his man now, but the hooker does good. And gets his hands on the ball. Thomas steering. Eddie Skinner waiting. And it's going to be Quegg's ball. Yeah, I think that was Leighton that managed to get in and get the ball, get his hands onto the ball and then soak it up. Which means Oscar Thomas couldn't get the ball to the back and be able to get some momentum going. But yeah, it's a big let off. Crow. Fine. Really interesting setup from Quegs here. Got all the players in the goal area. Not a setup that we've seen before. Okay, 
Don't be engaged, no early puck please lad. Crouch. Find. Set. It's a very Hold settled team, this Quag side. They've come through the school together, a lot of these players. It's not been too much chopping and changing as they've emerged. End of the line there, please. And that settled nature coming through in the way they structured their first attack. Have a number call, please, Paul. Yeah, you can see that, but sometimes, you know, when you score that early and that quickly, you know, then you can start to switch off slightly. Let's hope they keep that format going through, which we can see here. And Tom Pitts looking to test this team, but it's Langford who gets the ball again. And they've gone from one side of the pitch to the other. Skill set in this weather, extremely high from Wellington, but not uh, once they reloaded for the second phase. It's a shame because Langford looked really slippery down that left-hand side, managed to break through a few tackles, get them onto the front foot there. You know, just backs himself on the outside, keeps fighting, doesn't give up in the fight, leg drive through. Yeah, it's four players are right around him. But here, great read defensively. We've talked about him already, disrupting the line out. But Leighton there just gets in, makes a great tackle. And for Cilia. Three changes for Wellington. Still, Quegg's camped in there, 22. Hold it, Black. Big drive. Okay, 50 minutes played in the first half. Half hour Crouch. per half, and under 15's level. And wherever you're watching from, whoever you're watching for, and whoever you're supporting, we're delighted to have your company for our live stream here on the school's cup finals day. And this is the first of the two cup finals, the under 18s coming along a little bit later on. But Wellington synonymous with lifting cups at Twickenham in any schoolboy competition over the years. And Quiggs, one of the powerhouses of the North. Move out the way, Black. Stay there. So far, it's been two teams expressing themselves early on, and Quiggs looking to do that again from their 22. Big hit here coming in, the fly half, Ben right. Smith. Move, Black. Harris Ning with the box kick, it's well read. And flipped along to Langford. Pitts here. Gold release. Again from Smith, again to Langford. He drops it. Has to regather. He's done really well. Leave it gold. Wellington looking to raise the pace, but just running out of some of the precision we've seen so far. Jacob's story hit very hard, the hooker. When Wellington switched straight into defence mode, they don't wait around. So Quiggs having to pick their way forward and avoid the rush defence of the Berkshire School. Reach, when you're facing a defence which is as ready uh, and as focused on knocking you back as Wellington are right now, what, what tactical options should you be looking at? Quite often enough, when you've got so many bodies in front of you, there's going to be space probably in behind. At the moment, they've only got Langford sitting back on his own in the backfield, especially on turnover. So probably be looking there for 
for William Hunter to just have a little look up, but not just on him. Players around him need to be having a look, especially the players on the edges. There's no space in front of me. Could there be something in behind? And then that starts to question the defence. Do we need to drop another player back? Do we need to stay high? And then you can pick off different options. Half-back pairing, making those decisions, Harris, Ning and Will Hunter. Crow. Five. They're having to do it with lightning reactions because the time they have on the ball is being severely cut down by this Wellington defence. I think they're being really smart around the breakdown as well. You know, they're going in Crow. to try and get the turnover, but as soon as they feel some Five. support coming in, they back off. And then they pick their opportunity, which we just saw Oscar Thomas do there. Hold the field flat. Good scrum from Wellington. They go to their blind side where Pitts is lining himself up and slashing back the left wing. It's going to knock forward. Oh. Rory McKnight. Sometimes in these kinds of conditions, you want to play fast and you want to play flat, but sometimes just giving yourself a little bit more depth. He was right on the shoulder there of Ben Smith, which just you know, puts more pressure on being able to move the ball very quickly and harder to take at the line. Hold the shot, flat. More pressure put on the scrum and. Weggs can't get any clean ball. Penalty goes the way of Wellington. Eddie Skinner there just put pressure on at the breakdown. You know, Ning just taking too long on the ball to move it, inviting him in. We've spoken about how relentless they're being in defence. So you've got to expect the pressure to come from wherever. Now, fortunate Jack Bailey just trying to tidy up a little bit of mess. He's come from an offside position. Just watching Wellington every time, you know, whether they've been under pressure and given away a big penalty or when they've gone for the posts, they're coming in as a group, they're regrouping, probably the captain having a few words to talk about what, what's the next job, what we've got the next focus on. They're really good to see the maturity of the young men. And he go Langford. Lining up, a second kick at goal, sets off well. But he doesn't find the target. So the score stays as they are, 7-3. Langford having nailed a conversion from fairly wide outside with his first kick. Unable to double up. This dropout will be taken by Sam McKenzie. He's also a Wakefield Trinity rugby league player, is McKenzie. Makes this one long and then That's follows right. up his kick, and so too, goodness me, to Zander Leighton. But Wellington with the ball in their hands, the hits that have been flying in from both teams in this cup final. Extremely zeroed in, and technically strong goal. very, very strong as well. Yeah, they're both, they're both teams are being really physical in that contact area. Both want making a mark. You know, not only a presence was they got the ball in hand and when they're carrying into contact, but the reply to it, you know, not wanting to give an inch to either side of the team. Crow. You know, we talk about the battle of the physicality Five. being confrontational, Seven. and often that's where the game is won. You know, whichever team can be more confrontational Five. or physical allows you th the opportunities to play. Will Evans just pumps his knees as high as he can. The outside centre really enjoys the physical side of rugby, does Will Evans, and we're seeing that already today, that red scrum hat, a beacon for his presence on the pitch, and there he goes to work in defence on Rory McKnight. Big pass from Smith to Langford, who has Pitts with him, and Langford bumps off one defender. Call team, 
Now here come some of Wellington's big boppers. Oscar Thomas. Knock on, some advantage. To goal. Hunter tidying up. The Quakes, they keep finding a way to frustrate and stifle Wellington's attack. And they've only managed to get into Wellington territory and cause a menace on one occasion. That's where their penalty came from. Playing some nice footy from a deep part of the pitch with Gia Khan. But the practical side of things comes into play and a kick out from McKenzie. Yeah, just probably both teams have struggled to keep hold of the ball to, for multiple phases. And they start to really build towards something and then they just get a little bit flat or turnover in the breakdown area. Yeah, but that's a good exit from them. Khan gets a really good carry. Two players hanging off them, not giving up the fight in the leg drive which then is what gives Hunter the opportunity to kick. So Thomas has that chance to throw. He's been really on the money with his line-up throwing so far, and now he tucks it under that big arm of his and barrows his way forward. No hands, goal, leave it. Running a penalty. It's a couple of times which... Quakes have been pinged in the ruck for that type of misdemeanor. Yeah, they're just slightly coming off their feet. You know, they've got numbers there. You just need to be able to hold your body weight over that ball. But equally, Wellington need to be watching out for that because when they get that right, they're going to be getting some turnovers. A really good set piece. That's what we saw from that first try. Working really tight, staying low to the ground, leg drive forward. Thomas just saw a sniff of opportunity to just dart off the back of it. He's going to have another chance here. Perhaps Oscar Thomas, he up, angles Tom. his body forward. And, over. and will support peeling off Tackle this move. side, Callum O'Byrne. And Wellington Tom. locking on the door again, looking for their second score. Reaching for the line. A long, hard look given. And it's Queggs who have held up the ball at super work. That's unbelievable. That's Leighton again being disruptive. You know, that's a huge moment right there for all money. You think that they're going over here this close out. Physical power that Fasili Fasaye is. Kick out has gone and it's on to Pitts and Pitts has played it into Langford and Langford spins out of the first. Back Powerful the carry despite his stature is Inigo Langford. Forwards reset. They've been spurned once and Bill Bright in that blue scrum hat That's for Wellington carries it forward. Now with support from George Starmer Smith and Wellington close to the line again. More heroics required from Quegg's Wakefield, and they can't stop the ball this time. It's Rory McKnight who towers over the top and fires over the line. Lovely bit of patience from Wellington. You know, it all came from the restart, from the 22 dropout from the goal line dropout, sorry, but just good patience here, just stay nice and low. Just watch McNulty here, can, just has a little look up, knows that the defenders aren't going to be able to react, gets in tight, sees the opportunity, leg drives through and goes over the top. That's a big moment for him. He runs the line out, does Rory McKnight, he's got the hands of a back, but that time showing all the credentials of a top rate front five forward. Langford. So prominent in the build up to the try. Looks to convert.
a much tougher assignment, but he gets it. Seconds successful kick from the tee for Inigo Langford and Wellington. 14 points to three up against Queggs. I think Wellington are going to go to this, the power game that they've got. Got a number of players around that ball, hungry to take it. Big cheer from the crowd here after oh. that knock on. I think most of those cheers oh, were from a Queggs Wakefield perspective. And that just hit the chest of Ben Smith. And I think he's I think he's trying to give it a smile. Yeah, it's one of those coach killers, you just scored a try. All you want to do is catch and clear. But yeah, I'm sure his teammates around over saying, don't worry about it, Ben, let's move on. Next job now. So a minute to go until half time here in this under 15 cup final. It's been a steady half of work from Wellington. They've got an 11 point gap. Quags have only been in this position once before. A strike here, things will get very interesting. Jack Owensley is making the extra man on the right hand side, the fullback. Sam Haywood with that carry. Xander Leighton. He's going to make more yards than. Wellington would like with that run. Now to the captain, Jack Bailey, who orchestrates things to go behind him. Mackenzie thought about the offload. Harris Ning, just a little low. That's a good take again. A knock on afterwards. Bailey it was who, in contact, loses the ball. So half time is called. And it's been Wellington's half, 14 points to three they lead. And despite the rain coming down, they've looked very precise with their skills. And Queggs have it all to do in the second half. Well, Rich, it started so well for, for Wellington, a try so early on, as we'll see here, right from the line-out. Yeah, it was really smart play right from the kickoff. Got their kick chase right, really big hassle around the breakdown, earned themselves a penalty, kick to the corner, and the forwards went to work here. Philly Say picks the ball, leg drives through, knows that he's not going to get there. I think it's really important, places the ball back so he doesn't get held up, and then it's a turnover. And here, Ed Taylor gets low underneath the tacklers. There's no stopping him from there. big moment for them so early on to score gives them all the confidence but this didn't worry Quags. but here you see just we just saw moments ago Phyllis A carrying so strong and you think from this far out the power that he's got that he would be going in and under but really impressive from Leighton gets under the ball strips him from it and gets a great turnover but then on the back of that kick from the from the drop line, goal out. Yeah, they just retain the ball really, really well. Keep good patience. Drive towards the line. Great ball presentation to get the ball back. Here they've got so many options. The defenders don't know who's going to pick it. And then McKnight earns his team the try that he felt they should have scored on the other side of the pitch. But it's been a really strong start from Wellington in this first half. Quags have got a little bit of work to do in the second half if they want to get back into this game. In the one flash of Quags that we did see, Rach, their attack was pretty steady. Um, how can they conjure more of those attacks? How do they essentially get more possession? 
I think, you know, it's, it's been marginal errors that have cut crept into their game. So just losing the ball. They've, they've managed to retain the ball pretty well. But then at the critical moments is when they've got a little bit too flat or they've moved the ball to the outside and got isolated. The discipline has really let them down, which has given Wellington not only possession, but then the territory. We've been watching how good their driving mall is. So you can't afford to give away penalties in this middle part of the pitch because then that's going to give them the, the opportunity to strike on that. Um, so I'd say for me, it's discipline's going to be really key. And just, you know, maybe tighten up slightly. It is windy. It, sorry, it is rainy. It's greasy out there. Just tighten up a little bit because then that'll make the defence also tighten up and then you might have some opportunities to run in space. As a school over the years, Quakes Wakefield in schoolboy competitions, the likes of the St. Joseph's tournament in Ipswich and these national cup competitions as well. They're the type of side that are never beaten until the final whistle confirms so. And they keep playing right to the end. Their ability to bounce back and toughen up as well. It's uh, right up there in schoolboy rugby. So second half about to begin. And you've got to find a way to dry the ball any which way you can. Up the jumper, that's as old school as it gets. For all of 10 seconds <laughs> until it hits the ground. I don't think these newer jerseys, they're not like the old cotton ones, don't they soak up the water quite as well? Anyway, perhaps some grip added as Quakes Wakefield begin the second half trailing 14 points to three against Wellington but showing smatterings of what they're capable of Sam McKenzie with kickoff finds his opposite man Will Corbett Ball. Well, Eddie Skinner for a second thought the ball was going to be whisked Good away ball. Great start for Quags. Yeah, really good intent. You could see in the huddle half time, the coach is using his arms in a pushing motion. So obviously that's apply pressure, go and get in their faces, challenge the breakdown. And then they've got the rewards from that right from the off, which will give them confidence now. Really big opportunity here to strike from the scrum. Free kick, Harris Ning sends it straight back to Mackenzie. But Will Hunter takes control. And they're going to go for the scrum again. Yeah, good option. Jacob's story there. Just reminding his 10 that if we kick this out, it's going to be their ball because it's only a free kick. sound Five. obvious that one but in the heat of the moments at Twickenham you've got to have and presence of goal. mind and Jacob Story to the fore there Backwards. this goes to Hunter having to regather and restart Jack Ounsley darts back the fullback didn't see enough of Jack Ounsley in that first half and he looks to be a talented runner and he gets up to speed here is Bailey. Ning looks both ways and then goes over to 
Charlie Rust. Ball pops out and Wellington will pounce from here. Numbers to their left if they can use them. Into the hands now of their right winger. Scorching into the five metre channel and then away. What a try from Jack Knapman. Well, that was really special. Came from the pressure in defence to turn the ball over at the breakdown. But brilliant finish there. But for me, it's all about Ryan Evans here. You know, all players, really smart decision there. Get the ball in two hands, misses two players, makes the ball beat the defender on the edge. But here, keeping the ball alive, pulls two of them in, manages to get the ball away. What a great finish there. Look at the celebrations. The one thing players do like is when it does rain and get a bit greasy, we call it slidey weather. So it means you can slide in glory as you score in, at Twickenham. Oh, it doesn't get better than that. It really doesn't. Jack Knapman, he scored in the semi-final. And he gets one in the final. And Ego Langford. Puts it into the wind that is here at Twickenham, but it doesn't carry it in. So Langford can't convert that super try from Jack Knapman. 19 points to three, though, as the second period begins. It's just the speed of four as well. You know, all players being an option straight from that turnover who were just moments being defensive. But look at that. Gets the ball back into two hands, manages to get it away whilst under huge amounts of pressure. And look at that in and away. Teases the last defender and manages to get on the outside and score. So this goes right down the throat of Jack Owensley. Tackle release, Black. Leave it, Black. And Queggs hit hard. They are getting no respite from Wellington. Nothing at all. And he's just got caught a bit high. You've got to drop your body height. You know, world rugby, England rugby, everybody has the narrative. They want to protect players. Got to make sure you're getting your tackle technique right. Dropping your body height. I'd love to see Queggs just speed up their ball slightly. Now that's what's allowing Wellington to come and apply the pressure. Three or four players all in front of the ball carrier's face. There's no space to go anywhere. Keep the gap, please. Jacob Story throws in at the line out taken and then worked a nice little short side number but knocking on the process yeah such a shame looking to do a little front peel option there just to change the picture for Wellington and what they're seeing and what they might read again just the error count it's just creeping up for this Quags team it's just gifting back the possession to Wellington what a position this is for Wellington. Archie Triplo gets the ball away. And the space here is there. Almost on to Mattman, the try scorer from Langford. So, Matt, last run, last sort of pushing up. What we need to do just to keep the angle. I probably thought he was going to go round again. You just move the ball slightly earlier. You've done all the work to draw that last defender. Put the outside player into a little bit more space than what you've got. Puts more pressure onto Queds defensively. But great scramble defence. Crowd. Fine. 
Well, if it's the type of weather for try dives, Rach, uh, it's the type of weather for last ditch tackles as well. Particularly on a surface such as this. But Wellington have turned that one back on their side. Splendid work from Triplo. One of the try scorers for Wellington, McKnight. Smith just feeds a fast charging Reese Evans. McKnight goes himself. Triplo. Little change of the angle at the last minute from his runner. Found him well. Smith. Will Corbett. He wants to bring Natman into things now. Langford. Steps back inside. A number of metres which are notching up in his carried column. Wellington so physical in attack as well as in defence. Now they go back to the right. It is Natman. It is Langford. Geordie Bland in the 19 jersey for Wellington gets a run and Queggs do get their hands on the ball. They were patient. Yeah, I was loving the urgency that Wellington were playing with, moving the ball really quickly away from the breakdown, not giving Queggs the opportunity to reset their defensive line. But they had just got isolated. I think it was Russ that was over the ball. You're trying to play real quick, but just get slightly isolated. Really good tackle. Dominant tackle hits him back, which allows Russ to get in and over the ball. Just allows that tackle to happen and then pounces on the opportunity. That's a big turnover for his team. That initial tackle made by Gia Khan. The loose head. From this position, Rach, on the scoreboard as well, but how things are going, what's the route back into things for Quiggs Wakefield? There is time, 20 minutes of it. I think that's exactly it. You've got 20 minutes yet to still get into this game. Don't need to panic, don't need to force things. Ultimately, you need to play in the right area of the pitch. You need to keep possession and try and find a way through this Wellington defence, but I don't think it's through them. I think you need to go round and oh look to go over them. They're getting quite condensed around the breakdown, but that's where they're getting a lot of their rewards. But like I said, I really love to see Craig speed up the way that they're playing, which doesn't give Wellington the opportunity to reset or read what's right. being played. No, no black, no. Goal, that's one, that's one. They start by making a few inroads in the mall, and then look to go deep with this kick this might work out nicely the bounce not quite in the favor of Queggs Levens tidied it up you're on the floor you're playing the ball on the floor playing the ball 14 goals that's a clever little kick pushing the ball to the space you know really lovely touch on it I would love to see the winger get underneath the ball to collect it but then again discipline que keeps creeping in need to tidy up around the breakdown oh. area they've got to secure their ball numbers to it good ball presentation and this formidable wellington market stall moves into position again Black straight line please and a source of great possession and then points in this match Oscar Goal. Thomas and the hooker goes round and then goes for a charge supported well and release one. Freddie Ash is involved and Triplo 
the scrum half. No man, ball's available. Gets it away. It's not quite where Smith would like it, but he has a go at the line, and Quegs are careful with where they place their hands on him. It goes back to the left. McKnight again breaks free the lock forward. All the way up to the line can McKnight roll onto the line he can't quite. Goal line dropout. Hang on. Been really impressed with McKnighty, you know, keeping the ball loaded, two hands, leg drive through. You know, you think he's going to get over here, but this is where he just will need to present the ball back, get another opportunity to play. And here is that opportunity because not the longest goal line restart from Queggs and Wellington. Gobble up the ball, get a penalty. At this point, Wellington only interested in scores of the five-point variety. Smith just bangs it into touch. Ah, oh, such an unfortunate strike there. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get his forward pack literally five metres out to give them the best opportunity to set up their maul. But just slightly kicks it on the outside. Yeah, good option to go for the line out. They've been dominant in that area. You know, some people will look back and go, oh, he should have gone through the three points. I think that was a good decision. Just the execution on the kick. He's trying to go for it as much as he can, which is what you need to ask from your 10. OK, both lost the footing simultaneously. Yeah. Slow it down, Matt. Slow with the engagement down, I think. Everybody OK? Slow it down, make sure you're level. Crowd! Five. Queen Elizabeth Grammar School needing Set. to start to plot a course Hold the back to the point score that Wellington have if they are to contend for this under 15 title. No black, leave it! Off 15 your feet. minutes to play at Twickenham. And still Queggs are hemmed into their leave own half. Black. Back in. Yep, take back. He's just come Backward. long, but Natman can't take it the first time. The right winger and try scorer supreme just minutes earlier. Gets the ball back into Langford's hands, and that's always spelling trouble for an opponent. Move goal. Triplo. He's run hard today. Reese Evans. In the 16 jersey, big carrier for Wellington. Smith, Geordie Bland it was who put his head down and made good work and Knappman might have a chance here again, Jack Knappman, ball goes to floor, Knock on. Initial pass was fine. what a great read from Ben Smith there, you know, there's not much space down that short side but manages to pick it off with pinpoint accuracy from his pass, Mark, just so unfortunate, just trying to keep the ball alive. Pass slightly dives. Wellington can't keep hold of it. Crow! Five! Set! Rage, all these forays forward for Wellington. Eating up the time available for Quiggs to get back in it. And keeping them deep into their 22 run out was from Will Hunter and this is now in the hands of Will Evans and Evans gets away from the first good speed from the outside centre Langford tries to upend him Leave it black. Jacob Storey has to check and Rock, no make sure he has the ball then he goes forward here is Jacan. No black. 
looking for speed but not finding it the penalty black does come their way gold and black substitutions so gold and black. that was a superb run by will off. evans down the, the left hand side of the pitch takes his team nearly 40 meters up the pitch gold numbers 16 and 17 and this is a please. moment for them gold now 16 this is an opportunity off, please. 16 the time is ticking off. thank you and black numbers four, to edge their way up 16, towards the try line 18 19 20. Gents, numbers four, 16, 18. Again, I do 19, sense that it has 19, to happen 19, now for Quegg's Wakefield. Complete now, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's a glorious day down at Twickenham for the school's final. What a day out. And one gold out, looking one to make out, it better. One advantage, yeah. Still two. just the one three points. Courtesy of their fly half, Will Hunter. Softening up Wellington in the forwards and looking to pick a way through with Hunter in the backs. Number one, black side entry at the mall. Side entry. Oh, I would have loved to have seen them move the ball a bit more, get it to the outside channels. We haven't seen much of Lomas, only defensively chasing things down and he looks like he's got some pace about him, so I'd love to see the ball in his hands, especially when you get a free kick like that, penalty advantage. What? Well, here we go, the Quegg supporters on the West End stands, giving everything they've got. And maybe that'll be enough Jacob Storey goes and fetches the ball from beyond the try line for Quex in six meters away line out is good oh. Bailey it is body positions a little high and Rufus Helm low as that the open side flanker and Helm reaches for the line he's got there Quex have the score and maybe they can build on it I think Quegs need to thank the supporters for that, giving them that extra lift in those, in that moment in the break. Just so superb in their set piece here. Get nice and tight, manage to transfer the ball back, get the momentum moving forward. But Helm keeping his head up, keeping his eyes up at what's in front of him. He probably didn't even expect to see that sort of space in front of him. But now they're right back into this game. Hunter it is, looking to convert the score Thank you. to make it a nine-point ball game with nine and a half minutes to play. The two chases of Wellington do enough to ensure that it stays at five points. And the gap remains at 11 there for this score. So good from Helm. Yeah, really good. But also just giving the whole team the confidence, knowing that what they can do when they get into the right position. But Helm here, you know, just gets to go straight to the side, sees the opportunity, slips through. Stammer Smith just takes his eyes off him for a second and he's in and over. Quegg's unable to take the restart. McKnight's it was who roared onto the ball. Felice can't cause any more havoc, at least on that occasion. But just as Wellington dropped the ball from restart, Quakes do that after their try. And this is the perfect position from which Wellington can spring another attack. Yeah, we've seen both teams do that. You know, have some really positive play, get points on the board, and then don't back it up with something positive. Yeah, that was a big let off. There's not many minutes left on the clock now, so Quags need to maximise any possession that they get. Quell. 
Five. We're at the point in Twickenham Seven. where we're as close as you can almost be to the Quakes Wakefield support. And those voices echoing onto the field and into Quiggs's performance as a juggle from Langford brilliantly kept alive it might work along the line for Knappman he plays it back into Smith Wellington playing fast and loose and maybe profiting here as the ball is popped over the head of Bill Bright and here goes Will Evans and here goes Quiggs and it's the try scorer Helm he places the ball almost into the hands of his back row partner Rust. What a moment. You would have thought from the line break earlier from Evans that he could have gone all the way. But what look at the work rate from Mc, McKnight there. Manages just to get a tap which disrupts the pass. But that could have been a pivotal moment right there. aren't giving up at all. Wellington go into the centres. It's Langford now who has to make the decision. He puts it on the toe for Jack Natman. It's going to beat everyone. The ball in touch, although Natman will dive on this and have a second try, at least, uh, at least in his own mind for that one. Yeah, I think he knew, you could see by the way he got up, but lovely little footballing skills, you know, two inches to the right-hand side of the of the white line, and that would have been a magnificent try, but clever little option. You know, although Wellington may not have possession now, this puts Queggs into a position where they're under a huge amount of pressure to get things right, to be able to clear and get out of this area. Jacob Story does find his mark. Six minutes to play at Twickenham. Queggs having got themselves back into this final. Maybe have further chances to run. Sam McKenzie. McKenzie and Evans. So important to Queggs' attack. The two centres. Evans just hoofs this downfield. Have to chase hard after his own kick. Langford now hitch kicks and steps away from Evans. Langford in broken field, the fullback. Go Harris on, Ning Lee. there in defence to usher Langford towards forwards. It's gone right through the heart of Queggs and so too Oscar Thomas. On for the number eight in Wellington's on, colours, Lee. Taylor. Now McKnight again, and that's a lovely line, scorching through the middle, goes Finn Crumbly, a bump to get over, and Wellington have wrapped up this under-15 cup final without a doubt. Crumbly, who gets the ceiling score. Such great play from Wellington, just being really patient, looking after the ball, picking their moments and their opportunity. But here, great carry from Taylor, gets them on the front foot, which makes Quakes have to scramble back. Suddenly, they're all looking in on the breakdown, not looking out on what's happening down the blind side. Lovely soft hands here from McKnight. Just pushes Crumley through, and what a finish. Show and go to no one to try and get the full back to drift off, but finds his way through to the try line. Route one, straight over him, and that should seal it. Quakes had to move quickly in order to reduce the deficit and they did the first part of that with their try they couldn't get out of their 22 and what a score that was from Wellington and Langford eyeing up the posts again No problem with the distance for Inigo Langford, just pushing it to the right of the posts. But Wellington have a 24 points to eight lead. Thanks to Finn Crumley's score. Okay. 
Jackson block. Quakes having kicked off just moments ago, they kicked it dead actually. So Wellington coming back to halfway with possession. And these final two and a half minutes, well, they're going to be a coronation. Yeah, often from restart, you're either going to have two options. You're going to go short and try and get the ball back, or you want to try and go as long as you can and pin them in there and try and make them force the error or kick the ball out. And then you can get possession back just slightly overcooked it. Ed Taylor gets it away to Langford. Wellington wanting more scores, and it's a lovely pop to Taylor again. Tom Pitts, it was the winger who kept the play alive. Taylor still wrestling, and now it's Bill Bright. Penalty comes, everything going Wellington's way. Number 12, gold. Ben Smith's uh, kick this time. Goodness me, I think it's happened again. I've done one of them before, Ben. It's all right. It happens to us all. It's such a challenging kick. He's trying to get as close as he can to, to the flags to put his team in a great position. Yeah, we're talking about millimetres there. And from this position, in terms of the scoreline, why not? Why not push it? It is Quake's ball, however. And the Quakes fans, they're celebrating even more at this point uh, than at any point in the match. And here goes Hunter. Maybe something to cheer at the end for this, for Quakes. Backwards again. Black tackle move. And Wellington's defence, but their overall abrasiveness and aggression has really marked out this performance. And they're not going to relent now. Lap, I've got a head injury here. Head injury, please. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Houston here with stopping play. Fergus Kelly, one of the unsung heroes in the Quakes team. And he's just banged his head, so he is going off right at the end of this number 15 cup final. Some gold. So one minute to play, according to the referee's clock, and our clock not synced to that, by the way, so there is time. Rachel, um, plenty of options across uh, across Wellington's team certainly, but the player of this final, who would you award that one to? Yeah, I think there's been a couple of stand-up performances. I think Ben Smith's done really well on the ten shirt, you know, really leading his team around the pitch. I think Oscar Thomas, the hooker, has been excellent. What a bump from Will Evans! Then he goes again onto the loose head prop, taking on all comers. Quegs sparked again by their outside centre. That's ripped out of the tackle, packed away. Evans can't take it this time. Might fall for Wellington. Will fall for Ounslet. Sorry to cut you off, Rach, with your player of the match sum summary. We will come back to that. That's absolutely fine. I think Will Evans is, has definitely put his hand up. For a very worthy mention of how he's played. As if he was making the point to you. And despite uh, this final gold having right had time elapsed, both teams right still wanting to play and the finish in, the Sorry, in, the in style. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, Craig, Craig there just showing, you know, all their pride in what they want to do. They could hear their supporters not giving up, not knowing that the time might be up, but not giving up that fight. And the same for Wellington. They're not finished, they want more. And now they get a final opportunity. And just as I was saying, I think Oscar Thomas is on your screen now. I think he's been excellent, the hooker. His carries, but first and foremost, his set piece has been brilliant at the back of the mall. But my player of the match today is going to go to Rory McKnight. I think he's been excellent in the set piece. Obviously scoring that try in the bottom left corner. His cover tackle, but also that pivotal moment where he gave those soft, subtle hands and the vision to the centre, Finn Cumley, to go through on the try. But that's my player of the match, Rory McKnight. Wellington may be able to add more points to this party. Going close is Thomas. Been busy throughout. Been very technically good too, the Wellington hooker. Here is Bright. A move, Yeah, ball's there for you. Ball is there. Wellington edging a few more chess pieces closer to the line. Starmer Smith is repelled. Big carry. Callum O'Byrne. Philisse looks for the line and the big man gets it. That's the way to finish for Wellington College. Sila Philisse, whose big carry set up Wellington's first try of this final, does get over himself right at the end. Yeah, he's been pivotal in that pack for Wellington today, so deserves that try. Some really big carries coming in. Evans there and then Philisse pouncing on a loose ball. Just gets slightly underneath. Queggs and legs drive through to the try line. That's a massive moment for him to seal this game out completely. On the hooter, not giving up, keep going to the end. And Langford will end it with a successful conversion. Three from five for the fullback. He was dancing around this Twickenham pitch for most of the 60 minutes. Wellington have the cup final sewn up in the under 15s category. And they have done it from gun to post in some style. How good are those scenes? Just seeing them all celebrating. We've mentioned it in the first game, you know, these moments don't come around that often for these young men, but there's number five, my player of the match. I think he's been outstanding. You know, second rows don't always get the credit that they deserve, but he was outstanding throughout the entire game. As I mentioned, the soft hands and the ability to move the ball and the vision, but then also just, you know, his defensive effort to make that cover tackle, which could have been a massive pivotal moment to bring the scores closer together. The story of the match, here's how it started. It uh, was that big carry from Philisse, which got things going, but the first try from number eight, Ed Taylor. Yeah, early on, just went to their power game. Philisse gets them on the front foot, and then all of a sudden, Queggs are just too tight around the breakdown. Too many players on the left-hand side. And then the threat just comes from Taylor. And there's no stopping him. Again, they go to the power game. Forwards keeping it nice and tight. Leg driving through towards the try line places the ball back again you've got multiple players all around the ball not knowing who's going to take the pit but the player of the match McKnight 
sniffs a little bit of space. See Stammer Smith there, clever little line just staying at the back of the ruck. Doesn't allow for the opposition to get through. But here was a magnificent try, turnover ball, moves the ball to the outside. Here, defend, two defenders trying to tackle him, manages to get the ball away. Here, lovely step in, backs himself on the outside. No ball comes spilling out. I just love the reaction, the speed of thought and the execution. You know, all the players staying alive, ready to take the ball. Fights off one defender's conceding, another one's coming across. And that one just finishes so strongly in the bottom left corner. The moment we saw Queds really come alive. You know, Helm at the back of this mall, just head up rugby, sees that there's some space in front of him. At that point, Rach, we really felt like it, it might be on for Queggs. It might be on, but it is them who are receiving their medals first as the runners-up in the Under-15 Cup final. There is the try scorer, Rufus Helm. There was an attack from deep in their half, which might have led to more stardust and some of that, a generous amount of that sprinkled by Will Evans, who is holding that red scrum hat under his left arm. Super performance from the outside centre. But Queggs, the runners up to Wellington in the under 15 Vars. Under 15 Cup final, excuse me. So now Wellington climb the stairs. And it's important to note from Wellington's perspective that they have achieved this today without their team captain, Tom Maslin. Tom desperately, unfortunately, dislocated his shoulder during training last Thursday. And he's a splendid young talent with brilliant rugby IQ as well as a skill set to match, who always leads by example, but unable to be on the pitch for this match but Tom Maslin vital to Wellington's season nonetheless and now the players that have brought victory home 31 points to eight in the final do get to put those winners medals on and it's Jeff Blackett the president of the rugby football union behind them who is handing it out for a very, very special occasion for all involved in the Royal Box at the moment. Relatively local to Twickenham, Wellington College, in Berkshire, They've managed to bring many, many people down. So have Queggs, though, having travelled much further. But we hear that uh, Sila Filase has brought the most of anyone from Wellington's perspective uh, down for this match and uh, a try scorer in the final for him. The trophy lifted by Wellington College, the under-15 cup champions in 2022.
Congratulations to Wellington College. Congratulations to Queen Elizabeth Grammar School Wakefield on making it to the final and putting everything on the line against this team, but just not quite enough against a brilliant Wellington College. They'll now continue these celebrations on the pitch and do stay with us in our coverage if you want to stay for to watch those and absorb all that enjoyment. We will now take a quick break ahead of the under-18s Vars final that is coming up very shortly. Kick off at 2pm between Mount St Mary's College and Sutton Valence School. After that it'll be Kirkham Grammar against Trinity School from Croydon in the under-18 cup final. So our attention switches to the under-18s and we hope to have your company for that as well. <laughs> 